Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a split plot ANOVA in SPSS. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the statistics data editor in SPSS fictitious data that I'll be using for this example. And I'll be covering here a special type of ANOVA referred to as a split plot ANOVA Sometimes it's referred to as a mixed factor or mixed design ANOVA. And it's a particular type of a two-way repeated measures ANOVA. And it's the type that has one independent variable that's between subjects. In this case, this treatment variable, CBT, for one group and a control group. And a within subjects factor, another independent variable that has a within subjects factor. In this case, a pretest and a post-test. So that's why it's referred to as a mixed design. It's mixing a between subjects independent variable with a within subjects independent variable. So with these fictitious data, you can see I have 20 participants in the CBT group and 20 in the control group. And let's assume that we're using an instrument that measures functioning with a higher score representing a higher level of functioning. And we're going to administer this instrument before the treatment with the pretest and after the treatment with the post test. So this is a two way repeated measures ANOVA, and it has one between subjects factor and one within subjects factor. The between subjects factor in this case has two levels, and of course it can have more than two levels, and the within subjects factor also has two levels pretest and a post-test, and the within subjects factor can also have more than two levels. In this case, though, it's just two by two. So before we get into the analysis, I want to check for the assumption of normality. And when looking at the assumption of normality for this design, we'd want to evaluate four different distributions because we have a two by two, the two levels of the independent variable treatment and the two levels of the within subjects factor. So it would be these data for one group, these data for another, then this distribution, and this distribution. We want to test all four of those distributions to see if they are normal. So I'm going to go up to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and over to Explore. And we can test for normality here with just one dialog, with this explore dialog. We can move the pretest and the post test over to the dependent list list box, the treatment variable over to the factor list. I'm not going to make any changes here under statistics or under options. However, under plots, I am going to uncheck stem and leaf and check off histogram and check off normality plots with tests. Click continue and click OK. And we have the results here from this explore dialog. And we're going to want to take a look at the skewness values for pretest CBT and kurtosis. Same thing for pretest and control. Take a look at those values and post test CBT, same thing, and control CBT. We'll also want to take a look at all the histograms produced. There would be four histograms we'd have here. Again, two by two, so we're evaluating four distributions. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to take a look at the test of normality. And I'm going to specifically uh, evaluate the Shapiro-Wilk. And this is evaluated at an alpha of 0.05. So if we have a p-value greater than 0.05, uh, in this case, I'm just going to assume that we have a normal distribution, that I'm meeting the assumption of normality. Again, you want to evaluate the skewness and kurtosis and the histograms as well. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to look at these. And I have here for the Shapiro-Wilk and the p-values, all these are greater than 0.05 for all four of the distributions. Pre-test uh, CBT and control and post-test CBT and control. So I'm going to assume I've met that assumption of normality. And now I'm going to move into the two-way repeated measures ANOVA. So this will be analyzed, general linear model, repeated measures. 
and you can see we have a within subject factor name by default it's going to be factor one I'm going to change this to time because we have a administration of this instrument before the treatment and after the treatment and because we have before and after that's just two levels so number of levels that'll be two and then click add so we have time with two levels now I'm going to go here to the bottom left and click define and you have these within subjects variables here to the right I'm going to move pretest over to one and post test over to two again this is within subjects variables down here we have between subjects factors and that'll be the treatment variable that's the variable of two levels CBT and control so here to the right I'm only going to make changes under two of these sections plots and options so under plots I'm going to move treatment to the separate lines text box and time to the horizontal axis then press add and it's time times treatment down here under plots press continue under options I'm going to check off the descriptive statistics estimates of effect size and homogeneity tests I'm also going to move the treatment times time factor over to display means four so this is a factor interaction treatment times time then press continue and then press OK in the bottom left to run the analysis so here in the output we have within subjects factors you can see this is listed as dependent variable we have pretest and post test then we have between subjects factors we have treatment with two levels CBT and control and then we have the descriptive statistics and we're looking here at the means we have pretest CBT at 45.9 the post test CBT at 53.05 so it moved quite a bit there and the pretest control 47.55 and the post test control 47.4 so it dropped slightly moving down here to boxes test of equality of covariance matrices we can see that we have a non statistically significant finding here 0.057 it should be noted here that for the boxes test we usually evaluate an alpha of 0 0.01 not 0 0.05 however in that case this of course is still not statistically significant so we would assume that we have met this assumption we would assume we have equal covariance matrices moving down the output I'm going to skip past multivariate tests and we're going to move here to Mockley's test of sphericity now we don't have a p-value here it doesn't return a p-value because test will not run when you have only two levels of the within subjects factor in this case we do pretest and post test if we had more than two levels of the within subjects factor we would have a p-value here for Mockley's test of sphericity and to meet the assumption of sphericity we're looking for a p-value greater than 0.05 moving down here to the within the test of within subjects effects you can see for time it's reporting a main effect that's statistically significant and an interaction effect that's statistically significant time times treatment 0 0.001 now with this statistically significant interaction effect we really don't know if we have a statistically significant main effect and I'll show you on the plot in a moment why that's the case uh, but we do have a statistically significant interaction effect we know that times time treatment is statistically significant moving down here to Levine's test and again here for Levine's test we have two results two p-values one for pretest and one for post-test both of these p-values are greater than 0 0.05 so we're going to assume that we have met the assumption of homogeneity of variances and then moving down to this profile plot here at the end you can see that as we move from the pretest which is time one to the post test which is time two for the CBT group there is this improvement their scores increased by quite a bit there 
on this measure of functioning. But for the control group, as you move from the pretest to the post-test, there's little change. It actually decreases slightly. So that's why we can't interpret this main effect of time as necessarily being statistically significant. We don't know because it looks like that the change could just be a product of which group the participants were in. The CBT group had this change, quite a bit of change here from just under 46 to 53 and we had a slight drop here for the control. So we can't say for sure that we have a main effect for time with these results, with this interaction effect. I hope you found this video on performing a split plot ANOVA and SPSS to be useful. Thanks for watching.